Hello, welcome to the Weekly Wind-Up with myself, Emma Kirk. If you're a regular viewer of the Weekly Wind-Up or you follow my social media, you will no doubt realise I love inspirational stories and especially if they're breaking boundaries. Today my guest Cameron Lee has done exactly that and I'm very honoured to be able to share his story with you. So welcome to the show Cameron. Thank you for having me. If you could just start by telling me a little bit about your childhood. Um, I just grew up in a, a regular household, you know, in a council estate, very, um, very working class and everything and I always had these illusions of being on stage and you know just being a performer in front of the mirror all that kind of thing <laughs> Michael Jackson playing and stuff and then um, as we're getting older I realized that it wasn't really the norm for somebody from where I was from to be into that kind of music you know and into that kind of classical setting and enjoying all these kind of things and I used to go to school and that and all my friends would talk about the latest releases you know oh E17's new songs I'll take that you know and I'd be there going yeah Pavarotti you know? <laughs> And I quickly realised that wasn't acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I, I had to find my place within the both settings, you know, within um, my schoolhood and, and things like that. And then also within where I wanted to be. And the medium ground for me was just, like, like I told you before, I used to get my headphones on and I'd have my, my uh, music playing. I'd sit and I'd think, right, I can't be doing all this classical movement and really slow movements when everybody else is listening to Eminem. And, so I'd, I'd sit there and I'd, I'd move my head really fast thinking, right, they think I'm listening to that now. But in my head I'm playing Mario Lanza or Pavarotti or somebody like that. Each other. So. What were your influences? How did you become interested in, in like classical and, and opera? Um, from a, an early age, my grandma and granddad was very into, like, like I said, Mario Lanza and Pavarotti and the three tenors. And I used to just love listening to it and thinking, you know, how amazing these people were and the, the skill involved in learning that kind of music. Um, well, any kind of music really, but that kind of music for me had that, that it had everything, you know. And my granddad would sit there and he'd be like, right, well, try it, you know, here's your opportunity. I'm, me, grandma's listening, try it. And I'm like, no, I'm not going <laughs> to try it, you know. And then it took me a while just to, to build up that confidence and actually realise, well, why can't I do it, you know? What is setting me, what is stopping me from doing it? Is it, is it, there's a barrier there or am I creating my own barrier here by putting me on stipulations on things thinking I'm not good enough or... Is it only for this part of society to do this kind of thing? And I think once I realised that all I can do is, is try and fail and try again, I stopped caring and just actually trying, and, you know. I do know, though, that you actually started life out as a rapper, didn't you? I did. Um, <laughs> in musical, uh, Musically-wise, I did start out as a rapper, yeah, in a group called Rep My Duet with a lifelong friend. Um, we did quite well. We, we, we recorded an album, we did a few shows and things, and, yeah, it was interesting. Um, but even when that was going on, at the back of that, I was more into the classical scene, and mm -hmm. um, even when we were rehearsing and going to do shows and stuff, everybody was getting right into the music, and I'd be sitting there still listening to my same old songs, you know. And they're going, "Come on, get you know, it's a big show, get hyped up." And I'm going, "I am. This is my way of getting hyped up. <laughs> Listen to this high note; it's fantastic." Um, so it was just a matter of that for me, you know, starting off there and then getting this progression to where I am now. So what I mean embarking on a career on the stage or as a as a singer wanting to make albums for anybody just despite their background that's mm. quite a, a high goal isn't yes, it yeah. how did your friends and family I mean were they supportive of you I think um, my family has always been supportive you know if it weren't for them I probably would have given up a long time ago and trying to do anything like that you know um, from my dad and my mum driving me to shows and back and when I was younger and buying me equipment that I needed to be able to you know, pursue this um, and having supportive people, I think, is is fifty percent of everything. If, if there's no support yeah. network for you, then you're going to find it very hard to make it alone. Because there's nobody to pick you up when you fail. There's nobody, you know, if somebody turns around and says you're not good enough, there's nobody there to to pick that back up in you and say, well, that's one person's opinion. Yeah. Try it again. So a support network is is everything for me. You know. Mm. Um, so yeah. So they so your um, classical operatic kind of career. Mm -hmm. What what do your friends and your rapper friends think? At first it was very um, a lot of banter going on and a lot of people um, <laughs> with a lot of jokes but it was always in fun it was never uh, malicious or anything it was always just you just learn to take it you know it's like anything if, if all your friends are rugby players and you play football there's some banter going oh, on yeah, banter. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's same you've got rapper friends and R&B friends and you're seeing classical mm -hmm. but I think the good thing with music is everybody appreciates that no matter which part of music you're in there's a skill set yeah. um, that you need um, and you, you've got to work just as hard like a, athletes work very hard 
And I think classical singers very, work very hard on you know muscle strength for the for the vocals and everything like that. And you know when it comes to rappers, they need that that breath there to hold them long bars and things. And I think every single part of music has its own skill set that is very unique. Mm -hmm. And um, I think when, within the music industry, you all respect each other for your skill set. You know. So how did you transition then from from being a rapper to classical? What did it involve an awful lot more training? It, yeah, it did. Um, we had my friend who I started the rap group with. He'd been going to um, the vocal coach for a lot of years, um, and one day he said to me, "Right, we're getting serious now. We're going to go and see his vocal coach." And I remember turning up, and there's a big circle of people, and who are all quite um, some of them are quite big in the industry now. And I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, "Right, okay then." This is getting serious now. People are actually singing, you know. And I remember watching the vocal coach. Um, he's called Tony Wayne. He's, he's fantastic. Um, and he got on the stage and he just sang this and Dharma. And I sat there and that just changed everything for me because all of a sudden this boy that watching Pavarotti on these big stages around the world just saw somebody sing this song in a working men's club, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And that changed everything for me. That moment, I was like, right, well, that barrier that I held in my head of you have to be from this society or you have to be from this school or this education just went, you know. Yeah. And I said to him after the show, I said, right, that's it. Give me five years and I'm singing that same song on that stage with you. And six years later, <laughs> I, I managed to pull it off. <laughs> Extra year, but I got there. Good. So where where will you be next? Where, where, where are you going? Um, at the moment, I'm still focusing on um, education because I believe it's still important, even though you've got this goal to reach to be an entertainer, you still need something there, just in case that doesn't happen. You know, you can have as much talent in the world, but I think luck comes into a lot of it. And I think, you know, you always need something to fall back on. You know, just in case. So I'm, I'm still doing, um, I'm still going back into education, doing a lot of that things. But I am going to be performing with the Gilbert and Sullivan Society, um, wow. uh, doing Guys and Dolls. Okay. And that's, I believe, that's next May. Um, so I'm doing that at the moment, and then. I think I'm auditioning on Saturday for Jafar and Aladdin. So quite a few things going on. Mm -hmm. um, but at the moment, I'm just trying to focus on, on doing original things, you know, and um, doing an original album and trying to get some songs going. Um, and it's very hard because if you're an R&B singer, it's very easy to go online and buy R&B instrumentals or find a guitarist that can play pretty well. If you're doing classical music, it's very hard to find an orchestra that are willing to <laughs> record you a song. Um, <laughs> It's very hard to, to get there, you know. Yeah, okay. Well, I am very excited to be listening to you sing in a moment. Um, so you're going to leave the stage and we're going to set up for you to do that. Okay. Before he starts, I just want to say thank you for watching. I really hope you're going to enjoy this as much as I will. And if you wish to discuss this or any other topic you see on Kale TV, our contact details are on the screen. I'm Emma Kirk. We're about to listen to Cameron singing a song. Yeah. 
Every day. 